What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm here with Gersh One. And today we're back to answer more questions from you guys in another episode of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. And that is what Oscar did. He asks. Is it likely that the Loyalist Primarch slash Space Marines who went into the warp remain Loyalist or unchanged? If they got upgraded, what do you think they would be? So first, let's talk about the Primarchs. Because the Loyalist Primarchs, most of them went into the warp. Mm -hmm. So you have Jagatai Khan, who's hunting the Dark Eldar. Yeah. Lehman Russ, I think, who's also hunting Dark Eldar. <laughs> the, what's his name? Corvus Korax. Looking for a cure. Oh, plus, for, yeah, for his uh, mutated sons. And then um, Dorn, who is still alive. I don't care what you guys say. <laughs> um, he's also in the warp. Um, who are we missing? Uh, Vulcan. Oh, yeah. He's not necessarily in the warp. He's just chilling. He wants you guys to finish the little scavenger hunt he, mm -hmm. he organized. Um, so all those guys, I think, would end up being uh, perfectly fine. They would not be corrupted. And the reason for that is because, I mean, they're Primarchs, number one. Um, but... There have been examples of space marines that have been stuck in the warp come out and they're perfectly fine. The one that comes to mind is Lysander. Mm -hmm. Lysander went into the warp, was there fighting with the uh, Iron Warriors, mm -hmm. came out, fought the Iron Warriors again, <laughs> and then um, eventually made it back. And they were like, oh, you must be tainted. You spent so much time in the warp because he spent like a period of like X amount of years. Um in the warp which actually doubled or tripled like, in real time is weird in the warp yeah yeah and no he's perfectly fine uh a little crazy <laughs> yeah um but perfectly fine and then um same thing with there was another person that did that uh, i guess you could say drago's always doing it oh yeah he's exiting in and out mm -hmm. um but the point is that they have genetic their genetic stock is stronger than what a space marine would be okay. now if a space marine goes into the warp, they're more likely to get corrupted. Mm -hmm. Like a regular old space marine. Um, and there's so many examples of that. Like every other war band seems like a war band that went into the warp trying to fight a certain person and got corrupted. Um, Nurgle likes to do that with the whole stabby stabby, uh, filthy blade. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're like, oh no, it hurts. So then they turn to, <laughs> to Nurgle. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is if we do get a Primarch that goes into the warp and comes out chaos or warpified, I feel like that's putting too many like of these notable soldiers on chaos's side. Maybe that is going to be the plan. Maybe that's one way of how the Imperium loses because everybody's going to chaos. Um, but I thought it was going to be more split down the middle, where Gilliman comes out, then we get a demon Primarch, and then another Loyalist, and then a demon. But obviously that wasn't the case, because we have Mortarion and Magnus, uh, but only one Gilliman. Right. Um, we'll see what the future holds for these Loyalists who are in the warp, though. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, the Lion, which we, didn't, we forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's just asleep on the rock. He never went into the warp, so he should be fine. Yeah, he's fine. Next question comes from Jimmy M McHugh. How hard was the Sound Alchemist when the Exodite adv advert came or dropped? Like that. Super hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I was excited yet super confused because I saw the trailer before I saw the article that talked about it. So the trailer for the Exodite is a weird name because obviously it's talking about Eldar, or not Eldar, uh, the Tau. Everything was in the perspective of the Tau. However, an Exodite is a term related to the Eldar. Um, in your reaction video, you went into depth as to what it could be, so you guys should check that out. Um, but it looks promising. It looks interesting. Um, and I can't wait to see how they go about with the storyline. Uh, but it'd be a very, it's going to be interesting because you're going to see how a stealth suit fights. Right. And if I now looking back at it, I do. It's probably just gonna end up being Farsight, like the story of Farsight. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, um, I don't like how the face looks. It looks very babyish. Now, very why does round. he have the 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 marks on his face? Has there been a Tau warrior that has those marks? No, oh, usually it's to denote like uh, from what academy you came in, or like you you like you survived a battle that you should have died with like your brothers, and that's how you mark. 
mm. each other. Kind of like what they do with like a bonding knife, but just with markings. Mm. Or it could be something else that they completely uh, didn't, touch, didn't on. touch on and they do it for this little short. But what really got me hard was that the guys who did Astartes are 100% continuing that with uh, GW. So they teamed up with GW, and now they're going to be putting out more Astartes animations. And can't wait. I bet it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Because they did kind of give us a tease as like what's to come at the end of what was it, part five. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw orcs, which is awesome. Yeah. White scars, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. So if you guys haven't seen those animations, go ahead and check them out. Just type in Astartes, it's got like millions of views. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's more animators that have teamed up with GW to release stuff, so there's going to be a lot of animations to come from GW. They haven't exactly said where or how, they just said, make sure you have a Warhammer account. So chances are they're going to make like Warhammer TV Plus, you're going to have to have a subscription, we'll see. That's exciting, but at the same time, it's like, fuck. <laughs> I don't want to spend another $10 a month. Yeah, it's like another subscription service. It's like Paramount Plus just came out yesterday, and now it's like this. But by the looks of like what animators have done, like Hell's Reach, Astartes, Death of Hope, like this can be really, really good, and this could be the push that GW needs to make a feature-length film. Right. Um, and they, they should have like a Netflix show coming out too, right? They were supposed to, yeah, but mm -hmm. I don't know if COVID messed that up. Right. So yeah. there's uh, a lot of good and interesting things that um, should be coming out. Yeah. Next question comes from Colin in Texas. Would you like access to the Texas Geller Field? It doesn't <laughs> keep the warp out, but COVID can't get in. <laughs> that is a lie, man. Yeah. Nurgle uh, uh, finds a way. Yeah, I think, um, so for all those that don't know who, who don't live in the U.S., like Texas and a couple other states, usually southern states, um, lifted the whole uh, mask wearing and basically all COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. So they're basically just like, ah, fuck it, let's <laughs> just go. Um, the scary part is that the very first people within, like, my close friends and family that started dying because of COVID came from Texas. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Good luck. Ah, U.S. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what it is, is like if you're poor or a minority, it doesn't really matter. In the U.S. Next question. Oh, this one's by Opai Dragon. Which Primark versus Primark fight is would be your favorite? Huge Latino fan here. Oh, Hispanic fan. You like them big booty Latinas, <laughs> a.k.a. Bridget B. Um... A good fight that has already happened or could happen? I think in general. Because I think the fight between Rogaldorn um, and Alpharius, with spoiler alert, Alpharius dying was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a pretty interesting fight. Um, one that already happened that I enjoyed was the fight with uh, Conrad Kurz and Corvus Corax. Where uh, Kurs Ker saved Lorgar from dying. And then he was fighting Korax, and Korax was like, oh man, I actually gotta try this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one that I really wanna see would have been um, Ferris Manus against uh, Vulcan. Because I feel like they fight very similar. They both have like hammer like weapons and stuff. I want to see Demon Primarchs fight each other too. Mm, yeah, it could be, be cool fun. to see Fulgrim and Z or not Z Magnus Tarian. the Red. Yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Mortarian against like whatever Lorgar is becoming. Yeah. So a lot. Mm -hmm. That's what the Astartes guys should do. Just a bunch of like what different if primary, yeah, Primark battles. Next question. This one's by Javier Torres. Why does everyone give uh, Gilliman so much shit for Imperium Segundus? I think it was the right move within those circumstances. Nobody gives him shit. Who gives him shit? He's a fucking Primark. Well, it's like they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know who was still alive and what was the state of the universe. So in their eyes, it's like, well, we got to establish order. So Gilliman's like, Imperium, part two. Part two. <laughs> so I think they did the best with what they knew. 
like you said, given the circumstances. Emphasis on what they knew because they have already done this. Mm-hmm. When Lorgar did the whole, um, or right before the betrayal of Calton, he was doing the uh, secret. Not well, he was doing some type of warp storm. That's basically what Gilliman ordered, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Next question comes from Skatjack. What? How big is your pile of shame? You see that closet over there? All of it is my pile of shame. That's a lot. Yeah. I think I've only got like three boxes that I actually have to build. Oh. So it's not that much. Uh, but I do have a lot of stuff that I got to paint. So. Yeah, or you can say about 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> How about? Uh... Filthy Lemur says, can there be a cybernetic Tyranid? Not that mm. I'm aware of so far. Unless like the Imperium or somebody like manufactures something like that. Which has happened, the orcs do that. So like a speed freak would get a hold of a Tyranid bioform that's not, that doesn't have a synapse because synapse connects you to the hive mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're, they're just basically animals. Um, and they've done this to boars where they remove the legs and then put um, wheels. robotics or wheels in. <laughs> Bam. Um, I was gonna say maybe a tyranid that's been infected by like the flare virus, maybe? Or maybe. like has like um what are those little robots called? Nanoscarabs. Nanoscarabs, yeah. But it's like is it still a tyranid or is it just nanoscarabs in that shape? That's that's the question. Bunny hop. What's the strongest phase in the game currently? Command, psychic, shooting, melee, morale. <laughs> morale <laughs> yeah stupidest face um i would say sh- shooting for sure yeah shooting is where the majority of the good races or the good factions get their most kills because mm-hmm. even melee could be like really hazardous but there's a lot of like stratagem and command points to like or you could spend a two to like butt in and fight before your enemy taking away like those precious attacks yeah Agreed, agreed. Yeah, so definitely shooting. And of course, you have to shoot in order to like to take things away from the melee. So potentially, you could have a really strong melee army, but a shooty army can just wipe you off before you even get there. That's true. Next question comes from Mock Motion 07 Do you guys live in the UK or the US? What do you think, man? <laughs> Portillo. Yeah, we live in Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's what we should get today. Portillo's. The sound boss fire. Get that wet wet. That dry dry. <laughs> Next question. This one's be or this one's by Captain Slow. What character or faction has the most discrepancy between how powerful they are within the lore compared to how powerful or weak they are on the tabletop? It's a really good question. I would have to say Gilliman. Yeah, because I mean it's hard to showcase the power of a Primarch where a Gretchen can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in terms of like whole armies, mm-hmm. I feel like the um, the Dark Eldar. Because like the Dark Eldar fight and like hit and runs and raids and stuff, and like the game of 40k isn't based on that. So, if they gave uh, Dark Eldar some rule where like they can get part of their army in and then part of their army out, but not lose if their entire like thing goes away, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. Maybe the Tau, because like lore-wise, they're very, um, they're, they're like young, and usually, if any army really tries to, they can take out the Tau. Like they're the youngest race; they don't really control that f- much of space. They can't really travel faster than light speed, um, at least most of the time. Right. Uh, so they're they're the, they're at a huge disadvantage, and also you can't play using all of the races that are currently in the Greater Good Empire. Like they have like the the, the psychic bears, the Nikasar. <laughs> yeah, you've got like the Vespids and all these other races that are allied with them that you can't play on the tabletop. The Hrod. Hrod. Are the Hrod part of the 40k universe? They or, are. Or the, I don't uh, think they're town. part of the town. No. Yeah. Good question though. This next question. This next question, my tongue is going slower than my mind. It comes from Ursa Swan. What would happen if the Tau obtained the shards of a Catan? That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> That's what would happen. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> It'd be really badass if they used it as like the core for like a huge mecha. It's like a 
I don't know. Some weeb shit. <laughs> <laughs> some weeb shit. Yeah. That's what your first answer should have been. <laughs> some weeb shit. Yeah. No, but it's pretty interesting because uh, Catan, they, well, at least back in the day, they were known to make um, like, like, like deals with the devil, so to speak. Like, oh, I'll give you this power if you give me this. Um, obviously, it was all in the favor of the Catan. But now that they've been fragmented and split apart, their personalities aren't there. They're just like rampaging engines of destruction that you can't really control. And the Tao, since they're not very strong with like the powers of the warp, there's no real way to like control and like push those Catan in their favor. So it'd be like a last ditch effort where it's like, oh, we're losing too much ground. We're, we're all going to get wiped out unless we do this and you know just throw the katana out there and let it rampage yeah i think it would be really a uh, really cool mech suit though that goes supernova when you kill it mm -hmm. yeah. and then like katan look all like they could look really vastly different uh, but i was thinking maybe like the was it evangelion robot things what are those from where uh neon genesis evangelion Oh, uh, no, I don't know. That's some weeb shit. <laughs> yeah, it is. Some weeb shit. No, or it could be like some Naruto stuff with like Sasuke and Susano. Get it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bless you. Thank you. This next question comes from Richard Prid Pridemore. When would Admech and the Death Watch team up? Whenever there's Archaeal tech to be collected. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's by Mick McClough. Tyranids invade and harvest a tomb world. Do they have Necrodermis carapaces? No, so far no, just because I don't think that Necrodermis um, can be consumed by the Tyranid hive mind in those piles of goop. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Piles of goop. It's like uh, bio pools? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And he says, uh, thinking of getting them as my first minis and using it as a basis for their color scheme. You could do it. Don't don't um, don't say no because like the Lord says so. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because you could always twist it and say that these guys are the first. Like they're part of a, a tendril of some high fleet that's been that's like unique mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and also, we could be wrong. We're usually wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, because I mean, that does sound pretty badass. Like tyranids that like particleize to like move. Or like you think you're gonna like swipe a tear nid and it just phases through it. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Almost like Terminator uh, nids. The one problem is though that I like this is with any type of fan or homebrew type of lore. Mm -hmm. Do not start creating uh, special um, rules for to, in order to fit your lore. Yeah, because that's when uh, the actual game itself gets unbalanced which, yeah i mean 40k i don't think is a balanced game no i mean you what you could do what would be cool and if your group is cool with this is like getting different units from the necrons and getting different units from the tyranids and combining them without having to be unbound mm -hmm. that would be kind of cool but i think that's also again like pushing the the bounds of what's supposed to be bound yeah like <laughs> tipping the scales because it's like well i'm just gonna use three katan on my tyranid list that's true well it's like and you have command points, so... You could still use the force organization tr uh, chart where you have an HQ and two troops, mm -hmm. but you could just be like, I want a Necron Lord and Gaunts. Or I want, you, you know, you yeah. could still do something like that and then still have it be bound, mm -hmm. or, yeah, bound, instead of unbound. Obviously, this is just, like, with your friends, if you can't take that to tournaments and stuff. Definitely not, yeah. yeah. You'd probably get um, peed on. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing at my next tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Oh, uh, this one is by. <clears throat> I got one from Isaac Han. Oh, go ahead. What is the greater wog? The greater wog is this. What you're listening to. Um, it is. It is like a wog where it's like a psychic mentality, um, connected by our biological makeup as Hispanics. <laughs> um, <laughs> not her Hispanics. Not her Hispanics. Because we're all panicked. Right, and 40k is like 99.9% .9 panic. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's for the greater good, since I play Tao and he plays Orc, so it's wall. And when you combine for the greater wall, what it really means is for the greater war. Right. 
Um, yeah. Or battle. Yeah. And that's that's actually something that you guys came up with when we first started this sit and talk type of because we, I, I started watching um, Mini War Gamer. Oh my God! How could I have forgotten his name? It's not Dave. Matt. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Mini War Gamer. Matt. He used to do the sit, sit and talks. talks. And I love them. And I would listen to them over and over and over again. And then finally I was like, we should do something like that. And then that's where this came. And then like within the first couple episodes, we were like, we need to come up with a name. Help us out. And then you guys were like, let's say the greater walk. Because he plays Tao and I play Orcs. Ba-ba. The greater walk. Mm-hmm. We've been doing this for a very long time. Since we were 80 little bits. 80 little bits. 80, 80 little bits. <laughs> This guy said, my favorite thing about 40K is how cheap and easy it is to like sell at. Don't we all love that? Mm-hmm. It's so easy to steal from the GW stores too, right? <laughs> Even though Target and uh, Barnes & Noble and stuff, or not Barnes & Noble, is it Barnes & Noble? Are they selling GW stuff? Yeah. Target is too? Mm-hmm. Nah. It might have been a dream. I don't know. I have weird <laughs> dreams lately. Don't, don't, don't drink and smoke, guys. <laughs> This last question comes from Roberto71. 71? 71? Yeah. Stupidos. Gilliman in Spanish, of course. Guillermo. How could we not know? Of course it was Guillermo. Guillermo. And he has a little winky face, too. Guillermo. Can you say Guillermo again? Guillermo. You're really good at that, Gersh. I, I practice. With that being said... That's all we got for today, guys. If you guys want more questions to be asked, you know, put question before question because we get to those first. I'm Gersh One. Sound Alchemist, and we are out.